Let's bring in Clarissa Haas, our next live guest for uh, our next segment here. Clarissa, unfortunately, we're talking about uh, the, the, the tough side of business and the fact that sometimes it, the going gets tough and the going gets too tough sometimes. And we unfortunately have to talk about a couple of entities here that uh, are, are not, uh, or at least are, are folding up shop here as well. One of them, a very interesting uh, case that you reported on the other day about a company that uh, unfortunately had a, uh, a casino, uh, rather a, a load of casinos, uh, or at least casino games, I should say, uh, go missing and all of a sudden, now all of a sudden there's there's just not much more there for them. Can you tell us what kind of what's going on in terms of the stories that you're covering, unfortunately, that are meeting an end to some of these businesses? Well, it hasn't been an easy month for me, and I don't think it's gonna get easier in the next few months for a lot of stories on my beat. Which, yeah. Um, you know, and, and in this case, um, you know, the owner, Dennis Martin, described um, the, the the year as the year of fraud, theft, and abuse, you know, with rates being um, so low, um, you know, yeah, starting off his year with um, a $700,000 load of um, video poker machines being stolen. And while he was worked with law enforcement and they found other people's loads that had been stolen, unfortunately, in, the, in his case, this one wasn't, um, was never found. Um, and, and so then it, it was, you know, like with, you know, kind of the ongoing struggles with double brokering and, you know, identity, identity theft where some carriers were coming to him and saying, hey, um, you know, you owe me for this load. And they're like, they had, um, you know, fraudulently doctored some of the, um, you know, the confirmations, rate confirmations. And it wasn't his company that out actually was brokering the loads and, and and so i mean it, it, he just it, you know he he described it kind of by the time you know he had tried to work, negotiate with his bank and and was was talking about they could just kept moving the goalpost every day on on what you know what they were with the lending restrictions and what they were going to allow them to pay and not to pay um by the time that he decided that the only option was to wind down it was for a minute it was like relief that you know, like it had been a crazy, he had, he had founded this company, SEL, SCS, um, you know, 12 years ago, but it had been in the business for about 26 years. And he said, no day had ever been easy um, in, in this line of work. Uh, but by the time, you know, it was over, it was just like, okay, um, you know, now it's time, you know, time to do something else outside of this industry possibly this definitely i think is showing just how rough things are when you have an industry vet still going through some of these hardships when you're looking at the cases of theft is he a rarity in this industry right now or are you starting to see more cases of theft really starting to pop up in addition to these rough times with these lower rates no it it's not a rarity right now. And, you know, it's becoming, you know, very, unfortunately, very rampant in the industry. And there's been efforts to kind of curb that and to put um, safeguards in place to try to prevent it. But it seems like in some cases, there are always, you know, people that, that want to, you know, that criminals that want to do this are always a step ahead by the time a safeguard is put in place that could possibly um, you know, stop this. They've already moved on to another um, way. And, and so it seems like we're, you know, the industry as a whole is kind of behind, you know, when somebody really wants, you know, to, to you know, scam you, they, you know, they're, they're already working on the next scam while they're currently, while this, the current one is still working, I think, um, unfortunately. Clarissa, obviously, this is a, 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 yours is a tough beat right now just to, to follow some of these things that are going on at this moment in time. Um, but as you look at these uh, closings and bankruptcies and so forth, is there a clear narrative that is kind of common between them or are they different situations that are just coming to the same end? I think there, there is a common thing in some of the companies that I'm following. Um, some are kind of on the cusp right now that can't mention their names, but, you know, closely, definitely closely following them. But a lot of it is that the banks are nervous, like they're lending institutions that once kind of, you know, allowed them to do their business and operate, um, you know, 
uh, you know, the best way they sit or they, you know, to see fit, they said fit. It's now it's changed, you know, like, you know, when, when you see like a company like Convoy that got 900 and, you know, $25 million, you know, and, and they, you know, unfortunately, you know, couldn't make it. They're seeing um, companies like Dennis Martin's on a smaller scale that um, are definitely facing, you know, cash issues as well. But, um, you know, but so it's just, you know, the, they're nervous and, 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 you know, if unfortunately, you know, carriers can't, won't haul your loads without being paid. And that's kind of where in his case, it, it became, you know, like definitely carriers are still owed quite a bit of money right now. And that's the, in this case, um, you know, Dennis Martin wants to get them paid. Um, and there are, you know, a lot of angry ones, you know, he said he had, did have some that had parked their trucks outside of his headquarters in Fort Worth, you know, demanding payment. And, um, you know, so that's still the hope is to get them their money. But it just, you know, they're nervous, banks are nervous and, you know, kind of changing how they operate. And in Dennis's case, he just couldn't, he couldn't figure out he had laid off pretty much all but 10 internal people and, you know, was looking for homes for some of his independent, um, you know, freight agents to other logistics companies. And, um, you know, definitely had a back office support team, you know, operating outside the U.S. that um, he had to to let go as well. So he was um, trimming everything that he could, but ultimately it came down that he wasn't going to, he couldn't find a way out of it. And Chris, as you take a step back and look at the entire freight industry right now, is there any segment or sub-segment that seems to be a little bit better insulated for these times than others, whether it be a larger operations or an operation that operates in a certain vertical? Is anyone seeming to be a little bit more defensive towards this or is it just really impacting everyone all across the board? You know, in, in the, the cases that I've been following right now, all of them seem to be kind of diversified where they haul, they have a, you know, they haul a lot of refrigerated, they're hauling a lot of dry van, they're hauling a lot of steel products. So, you know, like where before it was like, if they only specialized in dry van, maybe that, you know, was, you know, but yeah, these, these brokerages seems like they had, you know, you know, had contracted with carriers that were, um, you know, hauling in all all different segments. So it's interesting right now for me, you know, that it's not the niche, you know, I haven't seen the niche, some of the niche haulers doing, or brokerages doing better than than some of these other ones that are kind of teetering on the brink right now. Certainly makes everybody nervous. But that's just what I've seen. Yeah, certainly makes everybody nervous when uh, essentially going broke is in discretion or is, is not discriminating on anybody. Uh, at this particular right. point. Clarissa, thanks so much for joining us. Sure, thanks for having me on today.